Hey YouTubers, Easy as Pie here today. I will be making a different kind of video for the Kawasaki series. I was out looking around trying to figure out how to calculate my compression changes as I installed different thicknesses of gaskets and I came across a lot of, I wouldn't say misinformation, but people that just really didn't know what they were talking about. So I wanted to put together a video showing you how to calculate the change in compression pressure within your cylinders with new gaskets. So let's get started. So for this video I would like to focus on the Kawasaki JS440 stand-up jet ski and for this particular machine uh, there are some known values that we'll be using. So the bore is uh, 68 millimeters or 6.8 centimeters stroke. This is my initial compression this is the stock compression ratio, the initial gasket thickness that I'll be starting with, and then the new copper gasket that I'll be putting in this jet ski. And here is actually an updated list. Like I said, this is for the 440 JS or XS or SX uh, ski that I'll be doing calculations for. But if you want to calculate for, say, a 300, a 400, 550, 650, or 750, just substitute these three numbers that you're seeing here with the numbers you'll see in these columns. And also substitute your initial compression with whatever the compression is that you're getting off of your ski. Um, if you don't have a compression tester and you just want to approximate uh, using the value of 120 or 140 or somewhere in there is appropriate. If you have different size gaskets you can simply substitute these numbers however 0 0.045 is fairly common for a fiber gasket that you'll usually find on there and 0 0.02 is typical for a copper style brett gasket. So first we'll be calculating the difference in the gasket volume. So initially we'll be starting with the initial gasket here that I've denoted as, as um, height of gasket zero. This would be the height of gasket one, which is our new gasket, and then HGD is the height of gasket difference. Um, and that's just a quick and easy calculation. My initial gasket was 0 0.05 inches. My new gasket is 0 0.02 inches and the difference between those two is 0 0.025 so don't get caught up in all these you know uh, HG1, HDGD, HD0 it's just the way that I'm signifying what it is so I can keep track of it in my mind so in order to make all these calculations I want everything in metric just to make this whole thing easier your engines in metric um, all of the you know diameters and all that jazz is in metric so it's a lot easier to work that way so I've just converted these over to metric. Um, you can do it um, by hand, but the easiest way is just to type in 0 0.02 inches and then type 2 centimeters into your Google search, and it'll do all these calculations for you. Um, just a quick uh, life pro tip, I guess you could call it. Now what we need to do is calculate the volume that that gasket um, creates inside of the cylinder. So we're just going to use a simple mathematic equation of pi times r squared, r being the radius. Now we know the diameter, which is the bore, 6.8 centimeters or 68 millimeters, and the radius is just half that, so that's equal to 3.4 centimeters or 34 millimeters. So using that information, we plug in the radius, 3.4 centimeters, into the equation, square it, which gives you 11.56 centimeters squared times 3.14 equals 36.29 square centimeters. So if you were to put in little uh, square centimeter blocks all over in this, um, this space here, you would need approximately 36.3 to fill that entire area. Now that we know the height of the gasket and the area, we can calculate the volume. So using the simple volume equation, um, area times height, or you may commonly know it as length times height times width, uh, we've already done 
half the work basically. So we just plug in the area, 36.298 or 36.3, and the height of the difference in the gasket, which would be 0 0.0635. Multiply them together, which gives us a total void volume of point or sorry 2.305 cubic centimeters that is the amount of space that will be removed from the cylinder as we go from our large gasket to our smaller gasket so this is the first critical number we'll need now we'll find the volume of gas in the cylinder and dome at top dead center and that is equal to the volume of the cylinder at bottom dead center divided by the compression. So we get to that number in a roundabout way. So the volume at top dead center is equal to 218 approximately, which is equal to one of the two cylinders. And the reason I'm using 6 here is because I don't actually know what the volume of the dome and gasket is, but I do know what the volume of the cylinder is based on the bore and the stroke. So instead of using the total compression of 7 to 1, what I'm doing is I'm subtracting the dome and the gasket. I'm saying that is the volume of space that all of the gas is compressed into, and I'm saying that the remaining space is the stroke and bore of that cylinder. So I'm saying it's 6. So knowing that it's 218 approximately, I divide that by 6, and that gives me a total compressed volume of 36.1 cubic centimeters. So now we get to the final equation that we're going to use, and that is equal to the initial pressure times the initial volume is equal to the final pressure times the final volume, because we know that the amount of gas that's inside that chamber does not change uh, along with a couple other factors. So our initial pressure going back to the top here we know is 135 psi. The initial volume is equal to the complete compressed volume which is 36.3. We're trying to solve for the final pressure and we know that the final volume is equal to 36.3 minus the amount of space that we subtracted by putting in the new gasket. So doing this math, we just work it through. We get a final pressure of 144.15 PSI, or compared to the 135 PSI that we initially saw, an addition of 9.15 PSI. Now here's a few additional things to consider when making these uh, calculations. You might find some sources of error. You could be using a variety of sized upper and lower gaskets, so this only accounts for changing the upper gasket, but the volume of those cylinders could change by using different types of lower end gaskets as well. Gaskets deform when you're tightening, so whenever you put those gaskets on, they don't remain that 0 0.045 or the 0 0.02 inches when you first put them in there. As you tighten down those bolts, they're going to squish and squeeze, and they will become smaller, so there is a bit of error there. Your block and head have casting imperfections. Now, um, a lot of this stuff is filed down or you know machined down to make it nice and smooth, but there's always going to be some imperfections which take away or add space to the volume of the cylinders. You may have upgraded or altered heads, which may increase or most likely decrease the volume of the domes or that space inside of the head. And you may even have bored cylinders, so you may find that this initial bore and stroke that you used may not even be applicable if you have entirely different, um, you know, uh, bore diameters. So here's one last look at the, the entire thing. So you can pause it if you need to take a look at any of these particular items. I hope this has been helpful. Um, if you have any comments or especially questions, feel free to throw them in the comments section and I will be happy to answer them. Thanks for watching.